They only make what you set up look welcome. Golly, that's good. I haven't found my first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pachods or Pacha! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> Hello, 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 Thirsty Thursday. The last one of these for 2021. Welcome to Beautiful Bourbon. Thank you for watching. I suppose I ought to bring up my phone so I can see if anybody's watching. <laughs> I forgot all about it till right now. Yeah, it's just the way it is. So you might notice that something is a little bit different about tonight's setting. Uh-huh. I'll show you that in just a second once I um, get to where I'm going here. Get that all set up. Da -da -da. Let's go scroll down, scroll down. There it is. There I am. All right. Hey, Michael's watching. Hey, Michael, how are you? <laughs> I'm glad you're with us. So I'm about to blow your mind. Now, first of all, I have to say that I have an audience here again. Uh, back on Thanksgiving, my mother was visiting. Well, she's here again uh, tonight. Uh, she's going to spend uh, New Year's Eve with us. She brought smoked pork chops tonight. Oh, man. So you need to watch the screen over there, Mom, so you can see what's about to happen. All right, so when you go to this, I mean, you're, you're used to seeing me upstairs. So if you want to see me upstairs, you know, I can just, I can just make that happen like this. Oh, woo! <laughs> watch this. Ah, there it is. <laughs> this is about to happen on that one. It's about to, there you go. I'm using a green screen, so if I want to be in a bar, I can be in a bar. <laughs> but I I, uh, I chose this background, uh, so we're going to um, stick with this background here. But uh, it just I wanted to try it. I was setting this thing up and realized that. I couldn't quite get the angle that I wanted, so I went with green screen so I could kind of choose my own background, and it worked, it's working out pretty well. I get this thing lit like you wouldn't believe, because I have to light me, and I have to light the green screen behind me, uh, otherwise you'll see shadows. See, watch what, see the shadow? See how it gets all freaky looking? Yeah. So, yeah, I just thought it'd be something fun and different, so here we are, we're trying it. Aaron, I look blurry? I don't look blurry, you're blurry. Quit drinking. <laughs> So, anyway, tonight what we're going to be doing is one called Horse Soldier. Now that's blurry. There, Horse Soldier. <laughs> Horse Soldier, this is the signature of the three that you can buy readily available in stores throughout everywhere. Um, there are, like I say, three. This is a weeded bourbon. This is made in small batches. Uh, it is 95 proof. It's non-chill filtered, which I know I'm going to like because I like the mouthfeel of things that aren't chill filtered um, or, for that matter, charcoal filtered. I, I like the mouthfeel of that. It's a little more viscous, I guess. It's a terrible word to use for bourbon, but that's kind of the way I feel about it. It's got a nice mouthfeel. I like how it's... What did somebody say the other day? Uh, syrupy or something like that? It just didn't sound very appetizing, but in a way, they're right. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to that. They do have two other ones. They have one that's a lower proof. Uh, it is the premium. It's aged two to four years. It's a straight bourbon at 87 proof. It's cost $52.99. This one is $72.99 in Ohio. Uh, they also have a barrel strength, 110 proof, which is $79.99. That's also a weeded bourbon, by the way. 
And then once a year, hey Vicky, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Once a year, they do a Commander Select, which is a limited annual release chosen by members of the Special Forces. And that's 130 proof. Comes out once a year, sells for huh, $529.69 in Ohio. So that's an expensive bottle. Um, okay, so Horse Soldier is an interesting story. Um, the members of the team that make up Horse Soldier have been in every major armed conflict since the Vietnam War. And this particular one, the, the horse soldiers came out of the first one of the first skirmishes in upper Afghanistan after 9-11. A group of Green Berets went into upper Afghanistan. They couldn't do it uh, with vehicles, so they got wild horses. And they took the wild horses into upper Afghanistan, which comes, that's why they call them the horse soldiers. They were along with the Green Berets. And they were able to, to you know, do what they needed to do and come out alive, which is fantastic. They are now uh, doing their business mainly out of Middle Spirits, which is in Columbus, Ohio. They, they have renamed their part of the st distillery. They're using their technology and they're using their expertise to create this. And they're calling it the, uh, the, the American Freedom Distillery. They also have locations in St. Petersburg, Florida, and Somerset, Kentucky, which is where they're eventually going to call home and build a plant, and that's where everything's going to be is Somerset, Kentucky. But right now, uh, this is being made in Columbus, Ohio, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, so the bottle. The bottle. There's a story about the bottle. Again, they're, they're, they, they came into action through different conflicts, but 9-11 was really... A big one for them. So the steel that they use to mold these bottles is steel that was reclaimed from the World Trade Center. So the World Trade Center has just a little bit of a footprint on every single bottle they make, which is kind of cool. I like that. And this is a neat bottle too. It's got that nice plate on the front. It's just a very, very nice looking bottle. Uh, okay, we're, we got people talking. Um, read again. Read again. Hmm. Everything but, but I... Yeah, everybody's supposed to look blurry. That's the way... I mean, I did it that way, Aaron. Everything but me looks blurry. I get it. I get it. You're still blurry. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So, so this is a signature. Their signature, it is a mash bill of 70% corn, 20% red winter wheat, and 10% malted barley. And yeah, I know. This is one of those situations that I didn't open up ahead of time. Sorry, guys. I was going to do it, and then things got crazy as I was trying to get this thing going. All right. That was an easy open. Ah! <laughs> Pop goes my co-ork. All right. All right, Vicky, what are you drinking tonight? Huh? I'll listen. All right. Put that over there. So it's got an interesting story. I like the story of Horse Soldier. Um... And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything military and veterans, and I, it's something I never did. And I remember one time going with my father to the VA and just thinking to myself, everybody in this place has volunteered to serve our country and potentially sacrifice their life. And I was potentially the only person in the building that didn't make that commitment, and I find it kind of felt low. So ever since then, I've done what I can uh, to make sure that the veterans uh, and those who went before us actually feel appreciated. When I see soldiers in the airports and things like that, I make sure that I walk up and shake their hand and thank them. And it's the least I can do. And to make sure that I vote for people who are going to be on their side. So I do what I can. So this is the horse soldier signature, weeded. Which is kind of cool because just not long ago, we were talking about Weller and we tasted the old elk weeded bourbon. I really liked it. Uh, so I'm, I'm hearing mixed reviews about this one online. Um, so let's, uh, let's just uh, put it through its paces, shall we? I was going to do this in this glass. <laughs> let's put it in this one. There. All right. This is the bourbon trail glass and it's got that snoot. It's a little bit fluted. It'll help. Help the aromas come into menage. All right. Who we got? Dan. 
Dan is watching. Hey, Dan, how are you, sir? Welcome to the show, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We do this every Thursday, and uh, this is the last one of the year. This is number 76. Yeah, since I started this, this is number 76. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> and every single one of them has been different, I think. There might have been one that I doubled up. I think it was Russell's tenure. I think I did that one twice. <laughs> so if you want to say different ones, this is 75 different ones. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's give this the nose. Let's roll it around here. Ooh, it's actually nice. It's got a, it's kind of spicy. It's, it reminds me of baking spices. Definitely cinnamon forward to, to me. To me, it's cinnamon forward. In vanilla, and there's a nice, um, it's a fruit, like a plum, maybe. And um, cigar, uh, definitely oak. And something green, like not grass, but maybe it's the wheat, maybe it's the malted barley. Um, I'm getting definitely some sort of a green note. Think of it like a green stick, like a like a piece of wood that's just a stick that you're breaking. I don't know, it's shrubbery somehow, but but fragrant shrubbery. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Caramel's coming out. If you have a degree, it's caramel. <laughs> no nougat though. No nougat. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. It's got a little bit of a nutty, a uh, little hazelnut in there as well. This is, a, this is a really nice nose. There's a lot going on in this nose. Maybe I'm just not inhibited tonight at all. Maybe, maybe I'm feeling good <laughs> or something. Don't have a, don't, don't a blow or anything. So, yeah, that's nice. All right, let's try it. Okay, the mouthfeel is a little thin at first blush. The bloom is really nice. Starts right in the center of your tongue and just grows. That burn just grows. I call it the bloom because it doesn't sit in one place. It doesn't, it's not stationary. It just grows. And this, this was nice. That was a nice bloom. For non-chill filtered, I kind of expected it to be a little bit more thick as far as mouthfeel goes. Uh, it's got a thinness to it. Uh, I don't know how long this has been aged. Uh, the lower proof one is two to four years, so I want to say this one has got to be at least four years. It doesn't present itself as a young bourbon. It presents itself as something with a little bit of character, but it is kind of thin on the, on the mouthfeel. Let's go for number two. Definitely thin on the mouthfeel. <clears throat> Excuse me, it started to go around the wrong tube. Excuse me. It, it's a little thin. Um, the flavors are different than the nose. I'm not getting near as much complexity on the, on the mouth, on the palate, as I did um, on the nose. Um, caramels are popping out, the cinnamons, um, but definitely the oak is very present to me. Um, it's got a very earthy flavor, um, which is not what, I've, what I would have expected from the nose. Um, the flavor of this is uh, very, very earthy. Um, the woods, the oaks, um, the green isn't in it. There's no green. It's not like shrubbery or anything like that. I'm just getting um, definitely kind of a, just earthy. I mean... It, when you, when you have coffee and you said it's earthy, it kind of tastes like dirt a little bit. I don't want to say that about this, but it wouldn't be inaccurate. And it's not the type of dirt. Like, I've had a dirty-tasting drink before, Whistle Pig 10-year. That was like somebody grinding corn into, like, a 
dirt driveway with old cruddy cowboy boots. That's what that tasted like to me. So that definitely tasted like dirt. This doesn't taste like dirt, but it has an earthy taste to it. How about we do it again? The cinnamon is still there. Vanilla is still there. Caramel is still there. I mean, it's not bad. Um, again, it's a little thin, and um, the flavors don't... The flavors are not complex. The nose is complex. The flavors are not complex. Um, but this is young. It's a new company. It hasn't been around real long. I, I want to say middle 2010s is when they got their start. Uh, or it could have been earlier than that. I don't know. I want to say it was the middle 2010s, like 2016 or something like that. So they haven't been around a long time. They're still learning the business. Um, uh, middle West Spirits and Columbus is doing their distilling for them. Um, and I haven't had their stuff. So... I don't know anything about them. Um, I, I don't... I, it, this is fine. I, I'm not going to say I like it. It's not in my top 50. <laughs> I've done 76 of these bourbon casts. It's not in my top 50. Um, but I'd say it's not in my lower 25 either. Eh, I don't know. Somewhere in there. Beverly's watching. Hey, Beverly. How are you? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope you're having a... Uh, a party of your own, getting set for a brand new year and hopefully a brand new set of circumstances to life. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it neat. It's got lots of flavor. It just doesn't have complex flavor. It's definitely got a different flavor than most bourbons. Now, this is a weeded bourbon. So it doesn't have that spiciness of rye. Uh, it's got 70% corn. Uh, what did I say? 20% red winter wheat and 10% malted barley. That's a little bit of a higher barley content than a lot of the bourbons that I drink. Uh, so maybe that's where I'm getting a little bit of the grassiness. I don't know. But there's no rye. This is wheat. All right. So we'll do a little water with this. You like my new uh, bourbon shirt? <laughs> bourbon, I'll be there for you. Saw this and couldn't turn it down. I love this one. And since this is all about military and a family of a different type, it seemed like a good thing to do a friend's shirt. All right, so here we go. I'm actually going to do a little more than that. I want to see if I can get this to open up. All right. Okay. Okay. Swirl that water around in there a little bit. I'm sitting right here, and my mother is sitting right there, and she's actually watching the screen on the other side of the room with the volumes down. <laughs> it looks good, though, doesn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't know it's a green screen behind me. I had a lot of work to do. I worked on this for like a couple of hours to get it so this was lit right. Okay. Little water in there. Let's see what happens. It made it more earthy. The wood is definitely coming out. The oak really popped. Still a hint of caramel and cinnamon, but the uh, the woodiness of this, the earthiness of this, is really a uh, it's a character of this particular spirit, um, and that's what I'm getting when I added water to it. it. It squelched some of the other flavors I was getting, which wasn't a lot, um, and it pulled out more of the earthiness. There might be a little banana in it. Um, that, that's really stretching it to try to find banana in that, but I got it. It's there. I just had to think about it. Uh, I'm not catching honey or any of the normal notes that I really enjoy out of most of my bourbons. This is just very earthy. Mm. The baking spices are still there. I'm getting some nutmeg. Um, again, some cinnamon. Um, it's, it's not bad. 
if you put a couple hours into that, I need a hobby. <laughs> I don't go, I don't do anything halfway. Even my hobbies are work. That's why I get in trouble a lot. <laughs> or used to. <laughs> All right. Let's put this stinker over ice, shall we? Well, I shouldn't call it a stinker. It's not a stinker. Let's pull out one of these wonderful ice spheres. Uh, my molds are upstairs. It's Wintersmiths is the name of the company where I get this mold. There's uh, two different molds that I use. The Wintersmiths is the, is the one I'm using here. It's, uh, it's nice. It's a nice mold. Um, you can do seven spheres all at once, whereas my other one you could only do two. <laughs> it does have other molds available, and I want to get those other molds, and I will uh, as soon as they're in stock again. Uh, one is a Collins glass. It's a long spear. That's cool. And then they've got um, cubes, big ice cubes, um, and, then, um, and then they've got the small ice cubes. And all of them is going to be clear. All of them is going to be clear like that. Well, it'll be clear as soon as I pour bourbon over the top of it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't ask for everything all at once. Ooh, there. Now there. Isn't that gorgeous? You can see me through it. Beautiful. I love it. Let's put a little more on there, though. Okay, what did I say this was? 90... 95 proof. 95. There we go. All right. Just get it cooled down a little bit. It's not often that I find that I like anything better when it's cooled down and on ice. I just, I'm not a fan. Uh, there are a few, though, that I've enjoyed better, and it's rare, but if you go back and watch the Burbcast, you'll find a couple of them that I really liked. Um, one of them wasn't that long ago. I can't remember which one it was, but there was one I really liked on ice not very long ago, maybe a month, six weeks. And of course, this is the drinking weekend. Last weekend, though, excuse me, that's when I really played. If you have never put... Two ounces of gin, an ounce of cognac, a half ounce of lemon juice, and what was the last thing? Triple sec? I think it was triple sec. I'd have to look again. I don't remember. <laughs> Put all that in a, in, a, in a shaker on ice, pour it into a cocktail glass or my t martini glass. <laughs> Just the gin and the cognac alone were very, very good. But then I added the other stuff. That was even better. Oh, it's very tasty. I know not everybody likes gin, but um, gin is, is one of those things that you, you got to play with. If you don't like the taste of gin, which is very heavy in the juniper, otherwise it's not gin, um, then you got to do things to it to make it drinkable. And some people will do like a little bit of lemon and some 7-Up. It's called a gin lemon 7. Uh, other people will add tonic water or Canada Dry or your ginger ale of choice. Um, other people will add <laughs> rum and vodka and tequila and a little soda pop and find themselves drinking a Long Island iced tea, which I do like. I need to make one of those one of these nights on this thing. That's what I need to do. My ice broke off. All right, guess what? It happened again. This is one of those rare spirits that I actually like better cooled down. <laughs> All right, I got to give you some notes because I enjoyed that so much that I didn't even think about what I was tasting. I just liked it better. So let me just uh, do that again. <laughs> That's just the weirdest thing. It's a weird thing when I like it better on ice than otherwise. Golly. <laughs> All right, let's get it cooled down. Definitely had a lot more flavor. It wasn't quite as earthy. It didn't have all that woodness to it. All right. I like that better. Um, slight citrus note in there. Um, that cinnamon and, and um, vanilla pop a little bit more. The sense of earthiness that I had kind of 
kind of went down. Um, there's definitely more flavor in it. And it it's, a, I think, for me, more of a pleasure of a flavor than what it was. There's still a bottle at the Holland Kroger. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, so, I mean, you ought to pick it up. If, if you're in Holland or at a store near you, you ought to pick it up. You ought to at least try it and then see what you think of it. Um, a lot of the recipes that I saw for this one online called for the old-fashioned. They want, they want you to make an old-fashioned out of it. I, I like rye or rye-heavy bourbons in my old fashions. I like that spice. I like something that's going to cut through the rest of the stuff in the old fashioned. So I'm not going to tell you this would be good for an old fashioned. Uh, if you're going to put this one in something, a New York sour would be good or any kind of whiskey sour might be all right. Um, I'd say, you know, add some elderflower and some honey and maybe a little lemon juice to it. That might be really tasty. Um, cause the, the bourbon itself is not enough. You need, you need to add the flavors to it that you want. Uh, maybe a little Luxardo cherry or some lime. Just, you know, try something different. Um, something you might try, if you want to do an old-fashioned with this, instead of using, um, let me get this right. Instead of using the simple syrup or the sugar, use amaretto. Amaretto has enough flavor that if you did two ounces of this and either three-quarters ounce Half, three quarters, start with a half and see how you like it. Go up to three quarters if you want more. An ounce may be too much. But this, along with amaretto and your orange peel and your, your ice, you might enjoy that old-fashioned better than the typical old-fashioned that you would do with this one. Um, I'm just saying because it's weeded and it's earthy and it just doesn't give you the spice that I would rather have in a mixed drink. Um, I like those ryes. <laughs> I love a rye, Rittenhouse, things like that. I love those in my old fashions. Natalie's watching. Hey, Natalie. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope you uh, hope 2022 is uh, better for you than 2020 and 2021 combined, <laughs> which isn't saying much. I'm just saying it's, both those years sucked. <laughs> I hope that you had better years than most of us. But I think it, admittedly, you can't give 2020 and 2021 a pat on the back. A punch in the face, maybe. A kick in the groin, but not a pat on the back. You don't say attaboy. You say, get out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just how I feel. All right. Yeah, see, I'm actually even getting... Um, some candy notes, a little citrus. If you're going to drink Horse Soldier, I'm going to tell you, I think you're going to like it best on ice. I think you will. So that's, uh, that's pretty well the end of it. Horse Soldier, a, a really neat brand uh, made right now in Ohio, but um, soon to be moving to Kentucky. Uh, take advantage of that limestone water down now. Mm -hmm. And the accent, of course. Um, but forged in fire, forged in bravery, and... Uh, named after the gentleman who uh, took the northern part of Afghanistan after 9-11, riding on wild horses along with the Green Berets. Pretty incredible story that goes along with Horse Soldier. Um, it's good over ice. I don't love it on water, and I don't love it neat. It's okay neat. Um, water, mm. ice, yeah, good on ice. Much better on ice. So uh, I'm, I'm going to look forward to trying the other ones. The... Barrel proof is weeded as well, and normally, normally they have a lot more going on with them as far as flavor goes and, and uh, complexity. The other one, which is like an 80, 80, hi Daniel, how are you, sir? Chris says, I'm with you, Rittenhouse or Wild Turkey 101 from my old fashioned. Yes, and I've got the Wild Turkey 101 rye, which I haven't opened yet. I want to try that one soon. Balances out the sweetness of the sugar, simple syrup. Agave, yeah, I got some agave upstairs. I'm looking forward to trying that. I got some more sugars coming too. I ordered some of the Demerara sugar and I didn't get it. They sent me the Turbinado, Turbinado sugar, which you can use in different drinks, but the old fashioned needs the Demerara sugar and I didn't get it. They sent the wrong one. So 
they refunded that one and they're going to be sending me the Demerara so I can make simple syrup out of Demerara, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm such a geek when it comes to this. I'm looking forward to making my simple syrup. <laughs> which, by the way, I, we talked about this back when we did um, the Suntory Toki. If you've never made a simple syrup, one-to-one, -one, water and sugar, but add in a green tea bag, just a Lipton green tea bag. It just adds a little something, and it's quite good. Uh, you can make a honey simple syrup, which is instead of sugar, you use half honey and half water. To me, it just tasted like watered down honey. I'd rather just use honey and be done with it. Um, but there's a place for it. The one that really excited me, though, was the green tea simple syrup. That was actually really tasty. Now, I've got some other ones I want to make, and I'm going to be doing some of that this year as I continue to evolve in my bartending skills. Um, sometimes when I'm not even doing the show, I get out some bottles and I play uh, just because I want to figure some different things out. And it's like cooking, and I'm a pretty decent cook. But with cooking, you sometimes just want to experiment with different flavors and find out what works. Like... My son made something a little while back, uh, some kind of dish with like sausage and onions and blah, 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 and he put cinnamon in it. And I said, son, is there cinnamon in this? And he says, yeah. And I'm like, why? <laughs> it would have been really good had it not been for the cinnamon, but he put, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he made it. I ate it. <laughs> Done. I didn't have to make dinner that night, which was nice. I'll admit it. It was nice. Have to stop by Churchill's, too. I've heard so much about Churchill's. I just haven't made it up there. Uh, they have Fee Brothers Whiskey Barrel Bitters. Ooh, I don't have that one. I do have the Black Walnut. Uh, total game. I do have the Black Walnut. I, I do that when I make my Black Manhattans. I know that's not a Black Manhattan. But I found a recipe for a Black Manhattan, and that's how they made it with the Black Walnut Bitters. So, that's what they called it. It works for me. <laughs> I'm not a picky man. <laughs> if that's what they want to call a black Manhattan, fine. And it was good. I do like a Manhattan. I do like an old-fashioned, but I like doing other stuff, too. Um, I made a whiskey sour not long ago. That was really good. Uh, New York sour, that was really good. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, over um, Christmas Eve, I was at a friend's house, and uh, I was asked to make a cocktail there. So I made the uh, Christmas sugar cookie, uh, which was really good. It had uh, Bailey's Irish Cream, and it had uh, the Jim Beam Red Stag, which, by the way, on its own is just nasty. Uh, we made it on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, too, or a week ago, um, and it, it tastes like cough syrup. It's nasty. But when you add the Red Stag and the Irish Cream and the Butterscotch Schnapps together, and you shake it, and you put a little cinnamon on top, uh -huh, and it was a hit. And there were people who had to be driven home that night. <laughs> I wasn't one of them. I gave myself the designation of DD. Ah, nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, hey, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you're here. It's the night before New Year's Eve, and you could be anywhere, but you decided to choose to, to spend that time with me. And I appreciate it. This is fun for me. I love the fact that you're here uh, just watching me do this. <laughs> uh, if you want to share it, hey, that'd be great. Uh, we're on Instagram at Beautiful Bourbon. You got the Facebook page now. We're starting to do some YouTube, and I've got the blog, which is never up to date. But I try. And the blog is at BeautifulBourbon.com. Uh, this all started because I like to take pictures of what I drink. And I didn't do it with this uh, because I didn't know what I was going to drink until about 20 minutes before the show started. It was either that or it was going to be... Uh, the Stranahan's. I almost used this one. This is a, a single malt whiskey. It's 100% malted barley. This is what they add to tin cup that keeps it from becoming a bourbon. So I'm not expecting a lot out of this because tin cup is very thin and doesn't have a lot going on. It's better than Basil Hayden to me. Um, but this is what they use in tin cup, and because it's a, it's a, it's a single malted barley whiskey, they can't call it bourbon. Um, so this was one I was thinking about trying. But I'm online today, and they were talking a lot about Horse Soldier, and I thought, eh, why not? And then I liked their story. So I thought, why not? So we decided to do, I decided to do the Horse Soldier. So we will be doing Stranahan soon. Um, after the new year, we're going to do something really cool. Um, Crown Royal has got 
a great history with some of their whiskeys. They had one from a distillery, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it burned down. So they had the remaining barrels from that distillery was called XR and it came in a red box. And that red box was signatory of the fact that the distillery burned down. So that was the first of the XRs that I'm aware of. And now that bottle is selling for late $900 a, a bottle. It's, it's really crazy because there's just so few of them out there. The next one came from the um, LaSalle plant, or DeSalle, one of the two. I think it's DeSalle in Canada, and they closed that plant down. Nothing burned. It's all good. But they had the remainder of the contents of the barrels from that distillery, which made up the XR, the extra rare, blue. I have some of that. It's really good. I've tried it before, but we're going to do it on the show. And my buddy Aaron, who joined me on the night that I got totally wasted. <laughs> you may remember it had something to do with getting a mullet, <laughs> which I did not do and won't do. But he's got the new XR, which is the XR18, which from what I understand is already gone. It's an 18-year Crown Royal XR. So sometime shortly after the new year, when we do this again, we're going to be doing the Crown Royal XRs. My XR, which is from the LaSalle, DeSalle, one of the two, distillery, and then the 18-year, which I don't have, but he does. These are awesome. Keep it up. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's really nice of you. That's a great way for me to start 2022 with a great compliment like that. I really appreciate that. That's very nice. So um, we will see you uh, next week. We're not going to be here New Year's Eve because <laughs> I'm going to be doing stuff. <laughs> and so will you. <clears throat> uh, but now you're armed with some inf information about Horse Soldier. And you know that if you're going to drink it, you need to either mix it or put it on ice for the best exposure that you can give it the best expression that it can have. And in the meantime, we will see you in a week. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing XR in a week or two weeks, uh, but we will be doing it. And uh, in the meantime, hey, again, thank you for watching. Do share. Uh, tell people about us. And uh, if you have suggestions about something you want me to try, bring it on. Let me know what it is. And if I have it, if I can get it, I'll try it. If there's a drink you want me to mix together and try it, send me the recipe. I'll do it. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I love that movie. I won't lie. I won't lie. Okay. Tombstone. I'm your Huckleberry. Val Kilmer. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. May 2022 be everything you hoped that 2020 and 2021 would be. May 2022 be the year for you, or at least the beginning of an incredible journey. That's the way I'm looking at it. So I hope you do too, and we will see you next time. Thank you again for watching. You take care, and uh, we will see you soon. Happy New Year. See you next year. There's always a cheesy guy that's got to say that. <laughs>